I'm making a video about these particular type of intake manifolds. These are intake manifolds that were available on Cadillac vehicles from 1976 to 1980. And this is the intake manifold that's fuel injected and it fits Oldsmobile engines. And uh, I guess Cadillac said that if they're forced to use an Oldsmobile engine in their vehicles, it's going to be fuel injected. And this is the only manifold that's fuel injected for the Oldsmobile engine from the factory. And uh, the one on the left here is iron and it was used on the earlier Cadillacs, uh, on the Cadillac Seville. And then later they switched over to this aluminum intake manifold which was also used on the Cadillac Eldorados. And you can see the early manifold is going to have your uh, larger throttle body bore. And then later they switched to a smaller throttle body and they probably realized that they didn't have to use such a large throttle body on just a regular uh, 350 engine. And another way to identify the iron manifold is that it'll have these uh, external ribs on here, whereas the aluminum intake won't have those ribs. And so, uh, of course, you could use these uh, intake manifolds on regular Oldsmobile engines, you know, like the small block Oldsmobile, like the 307, the 350, and the 403. But you're going to probably uh, want to get everything else, you know, not just the manifold, but also the injectors, the fuel rail, that computer with the harness and all related sensors, along with the throttle body and the computer control distributor. So it could be pretty hard to find those items. You'd probably be better off getting it from a uh, complete donor vehicle if he was wanting to uh, use the original Cadillac fuel injection in another vehicle. Of course, you could modify these manifolds for modern fuel injection. Uh, the problem is that these manifolds, though, they used uh, low impedance injectors, and those low impedance injectors had very s much smaller nozzles. And uh, if you was to want to use uh, your more modern high impedance injectors, you would need to precision drill these uh, injector holes uh, oversize so that you can put your modern injectors along with your more modern uh, computer. So it would buy, uh, not be very easy to uh, modify these for modern uh, fuel injection. You would probably be better off with a aftermarket type uh, intake manifold. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of these older vehicles had problems. You know, as the, the years went by, a lot of people realized that it's hard to find parts for these uh, fuel injection uh, vehicles. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of mechanics that know how to diagnose these. It's very hard to find replacement parts. And so if you want to just convert to carburetor, what I would recommend is to uh, completely remove the in this intake manifold and just get you a uh, regular Oldsmobile dual plane intake manifold that was made for a carburetor and then uh, change that distributor to a regular, you know, non-computerized uh, control distributor. And then you can just uh, completely do away with the computer and all the harness and everything and then run just a regular carburetor. <clears throat> of course, I have seen people adapt these manifolds to carburetor. You know, I've seen people get a plate and drill it and drill two holes for a, like a two barrel carburetor. Uh, the problem with doing that is that these manifolds, uh, they're, they're designed for fuel injection. They're single plane. And not only are they single plane, but it's a completely open plenum. There's no runners at all. Like for example, you know, it's just big and open. There's no runners. And for example, if you look in here, you can see right through this uh, intake manifold the other ports. There's no runners at all. If I stick my finger through here, you can easily see it just goes right to the other side real easy. There's no dividing wall. There's no runner. These manifolds also do not have any kind of uh, exhaust heat riser. So these, it would take probably a longer time for these uh, to warm up with a, with a carburetor. And... Uh, so if you was to put a carburetor on here, what would happen is it would basically just dump fuel right here. And since you got very little velocity, the fuel would just kind of sort of puddle up here and there. You would have a pretty unstable idle. It would probably be pretty difficult to get these uh, engines to idle good at low RPM. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it would be better just to switch to a regular dual plane manifold for the street if you want to use a carburetor. Of course, you could uh, get you a uh, four-barrel flange like this one, and uh, what you would want to do is uh, 
grind out completely the center of this uh, flange right here and then you can fairly easily get you this flange and uh, mount it here and then you can put a, uh, a square bore uh, carburetor on here like a Holly or a Edelbrock uh, square bore carburetor and then you can have a four barrel carburetor on there for more flow and that would be good for a, a high RPM intake like for racing and uh, you know it, it would be lower profile than these uh, high rise single plane type intake manifolds so it would be a good sleeper type of uh, high RPM intake manifold if you wanted to convert it to carburetor. Obviously you would want to seal these holes up for a carburetor. It would also make a, a pretty good manifold for a supercharger. You know, what you can do is completely maybe shave off this uh, flange completely and then you would be left with a pretty flat manifold. And then from there it would be pretty easy to mount like a supercharger up there. And uh, so these would be pretty good intake manifolds for maybe a supercharge application. And so uh, there you go. I just wanted to show you the differences between these two uh, particular manifolds that were available on Cadillacs with the Ozobel engine. And if you're interested in like maybe finding one of these kind of manifolds, the you know you you're not gonna find these in a junkyard uh, anymore. So what I would do if you wanted to actually find one of these manifolds, I would get the GM part number, like this, the aluminum manifold would be the 161-5880. If you want the aluminum intake manifold, just punch those numbers on a, on a search. Or in case you're interested in the iron intake manifold, it would be the uh, 160-6818. In case you're interested in the iron intake manifold. And so there you go. Just thought I'd show you guys these intakes. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me a line and I'll see you guys next time.